Okay, I've finally gotten a chance to sit down and do this one, and I've been asked about it a lot. This is a Rene Harrop Last Chance Cripple, uh, and this is a crippled mayfly that was developed for uh, a section of the Henry's Fork in Idaho, and it uh, can be tied in any variety of mayfly colorations. I'll sort of tell you a blue-winged olive version, just uh, being from Colorado, that's sort of our bug. Um, but you can, you can tie this in a PMD or a green drake or brown drake or uh, any variety of mayfly uh, flavors. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to start off with grab the package here. I'll show you um, an XC110 uh, Umqua hook. There we go. This is the Umqua X series. Get that over that way. There we go. Um, and I'm going to tie a size 18. Um, obviously, tie whatever size you want. Um, but a dry fly hook. Dry fly hook of choice um, really is how you can go about this. Um, this is a barbless black nickel finish dry fly hook. And I'm going to start with some 14 knot uh, gray thread. Uh, gray or olive in this case would work just fine. And for the, for the shuck, now the back end of this fly is a shuck more so than a tail. Uh, I'm going to take a little clump of, uh, you can use mallard dyed wood duck or, or real wood duck if you've got some laying around, uh, but I want the, the end of this shuck fairly sparse um, and about a shank length long. So when I tie this in, I want the piece that extends beyond the bend to be about a shank length. One more turn on that, so I'll pull that down just a little shorter. And then I'm going to wrap back over that. And because we're going to do a buyout body on this, I want to try to keep this underbody just as smooth as I can. So just a, about a shank length long tail there. Um, now, one of the cool things on this slide is the way the shuck is, is created. If you kind of use your imagination um, and think of this as the abdomen and tails of the nymph, um, then we're going to take some, some Nature Spirit emergence stubbing. This is just a brown olive color. Um, and essentially, this is antron fibers in mixed colors. I'm going to take this and sort of hand stack this clump. I've got much more than I need here until I get it into a little bunch like so. And then I'll cut the ends square and that's going to become the thorax of the nymph. You know, the idea of this is that the, the adult is coming out of the shuck and the, the shuck is still hanging back there. So I'm going to tie that clump in back here at the bend. So it overlaps about halfway down the tail, like so. And then I'm going to wrap forward over the butt ends and trim everything off at about the 80% point there. I'm going to bring my thread back to the base of that tail one more time. And at this point, I'm going to tie in a turkey biop. Um, now, this is an olive dun colored uh, magpie materials turkey biop. These are from uh, Steph Hankey, as I like to call him. He's a good friend of mine. I talk to him almost every day, um, or at least text with him every day. Um, he's got these beautiful biots that he does for us. Uh, but what I want to do on this turkey biot is I took my scissors and I'm cutting that sort of transparent edge off. If I can get it picked up, I just dropped it. Cut that edge off. So I make the buyout about half as wide, and that's going to allow me to make uh, these turns a lot closer together. So I'm going to lay this in with the tip. You can see the tip comes all the way forward to the end of the abdominal section. I'm going to wrap my thread forward over that. And I've got the ribbed edge down. So this is going to be a ribbed body um, as I wrap it. And anytime I wrap a buyout, I want to put a little shot of zappa gap on that thread base. So I'll come in with my hackle pliers. I'm going to grab the end of that biot. I'm going to start my first turn back here at the bend. And I like to kind of angle these rather than wrap them so quite upright. Um, I like that sort of spiraling look that this gives. Right up to the end of that underbody. And then I'm going to tie that biot off with just a few tight turns. And I'll trim that excess out. get an idea of what we're going for here. I'm going to take just a little tiny pinch 
of blue inked olive colored super fine dubbing. And again, this you know at this point you could you could vary this into a lot of stuff. You could use a brown biot and a, um, you know yellow dubbing for a PMD version. Um, so the color is up to you, whatever kind of bug you're trying to match. But with this little bit of dubbing um, on the end of the tie off, I'm going to build a little ball. Um, I want to make sure to leave myself you know 20 percent or so of the hook shank up here at the front end. I want to build a little ball there for the thorax. Then I can jump my thread down and wrap up to the hook eye. And just kind of leave my thread hanging thereabouts for the moment. Um, so now I'm going to tie the wing in. And there's a lot of different ways to do the wing on this fly. Um, you can take a CDC feather and bundle it up in a neat, neat little bunch like this and measure it about a hook shank long and tie that in. Um, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, I'm going to show you another technique that um, I've sort of come to like lately. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these little bit bigger CDC feathers. It's got a little bit denser fibers on it. You can see those are really nice and dense. Um, I'm going to strip this fluff off the very bottom edge. Uh, and this works particularly well on a small fly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a fairly large clump of this and just peel it from the feather and bundle it up into a bunch like so. And I'm not really too worried about the the tip length on that. I'm going to tie this in with a pinch wrap just behind the eye. I'm going to wrap back over it right up to that ball of dubbing, like so. And you can see I'm not worried about the length out here. We're, we're going to adjust that. I'll show you a cool trick. Um, now I'm going to pick up this, the butt ends of this CDC, and just beyond the end of that ball, I'm going to cut those off so they leave a little tuft. Um, that just adds a little flotation into the finished fly. I'm going to take a uh, blue dun hackle feather now. One of the things on a cripple, um, before I get too far along, I stripped a little bit of that butt in. Uh, one of the things on a cripple is the fly should look pretty bede bedraggled. Um, you don't want it to be perfectly clean and pretty. Um, so when I tie that feather in, I'm going to tie it in with the outside up. Um, that is a barred medium ginger dyed dun whiting uh, rooster cape feather. Um, regular blue dun will work just fine. I've got that feather so it, and it looks beautiful so I'm going to use it. Now one thing that I do on these um, and uh, Stephen and I just talked about this the other day. Um, rather than wrap this over this bare thread base that we've got in between, I'm going to take another tiny little pinch of dubbing and I'm going to dub that little band between the base of the wing and the thorax like so. You see, I didn't really fatten it up. Um, I just want to kind of cover that with some dubbing. What that's going to make is a nice little nest for our hackle to sit into as I wrap it. So as I begin to wrap this feather, um, I'm just going to go one turn in front of the other, but these wraps come out much more clean, wrapped over a little bit of dubbing there. I'll tie those off just behind the eye. And I can come in and trim that feather out. Like so. Now I'm going to lift the butt ends of this, or the tip ends of this CDC feather and stink my thread between it and the hook eye and just put a few turns on there. And that's just going to prop that up a bit. And then I'll come in and work my whip finish up from the bottom. And trim that thread out. Now, as I've been sitting here tying these this morning, what I would typically do is come in and thumbnail these off. Um, but I found a tool that works even better because I don't always have a thumbnail. And I'm going to show you what it is. Um, so this is a pair of Renamid uh, F4, FT4, I think is the number, FT4 tweezers. Um, and you can see it's a big flat-ended tweezer. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that, that CDC up and kind of set this pair of tweezers in at an angle. So the long end is about a shank length long. Then I'm just going to tear that wing off. And you can see, let me bring you back up into focus here. Let's see if we can get there. There we go. You can see we've got sort of a tapered shape to that wing. Um, not necessarily a cut wing because we've got still some raggedness to it. Um, I see one weird hackle fiber over here on this side. And I realize I just said that 
Triples are supposed to be a little disheveled, but uh, I can't put up with that kind of thing. I will not abide by that. Um, and that is my little last chance cripple. Now, um, very often I, I leave these as they sit. Um, I'll put them in my box and just tie them like this and put them in my box. Um, but very often on the water, I'll come in and trim at least a notch out of the bottom hackle just to make them sit a little bit lower, kind of a little V. Um, if not, come in and trim it all the way flat. Um, and I talk about it a lot, having a pair of scissors in your pack or, or uh, vest or wherever you carry your flies and goodies, um, just to be able to alter flies like that if I need to make little adjustments on the water or trim things down. Um, it's a pretty handy tool to have. Um, and I use it a lot. It surprises me how often I end up using those little scissors. And that is our blue-winged olive, last chance cripple. Um, cool little bug. Uh, you know, the mole fly is sort of the, the fly of choice for me on, during a blue-winged olive hatch, but one of the liabilities of the mole fly is it's relatively uh, uh, heavy maintenance. You know, you catch a lot of fish on it, you got to keep that, drying that thing out. Um, and it's maybe not the greatest fly in broken water where it's harder to see, or maybe if you're fishing from a boat. Um, where I've used this fly most successfully is in riffles where you've got a little bit choppier water. You need a fly that floats a little bit better. It's got a little more surface area to it. Um, really still pretty imitative. And the nice thing with this fly is because you've got um, sort of the nymph and the adult attached together, you can kind of size up. If the adults are, uh, are size 18s, you could probably use a size 16 because it's still got the nymph husk attached to it. Um, and you can see that, that antron sort of blends into that empty husk hanging off the back morphs into it as it were um, but that's that's a nifty little fly been around a long time too and uh, you should probably have some in your box fun to tie as well tie them in a few different colors um, give them a try this summer when there's different bugs hatching that's a good one you should know that um, i hope you do i hope you figure that out on your own uh, so go feed it to them i'm charlie craven thanks for watching